Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the final Self-Publishing Insiders of 2022. Uh, I am here as one of your three hosts. We also have our good friends and co-workers, Mark Leslie Fave and Dan Wood. Welcome, guys. Hey. Mark, I don't know if you know your microphone is muted, but your microphone is muted. So, <laughs> so uh, this is going to be a special show. We are, we've done this before. Uh, a couple of times, actually, I mean, you're probably familiar with Mark likes to take a look uh, at how the industry is doing, give you some numbers and things. And today is not going to be any different on that front. We've got some not numbers per se, but we've got some details about what's performing, what's doing uh, best out there. And we're all three going to look into our crystal balls and tell you exactly to the syllable what's going to happen over 2023. Right, guys? Exactly. <laughs> So, uh, Dan, uh, well, I don't, I, I know we talked a little bit about what we're going to say here, but, um, you know, did you, what was your biggest observation for 2023? I, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the highlights of what happened for D2D. Uh, but you're, if you want to, you know, dive into that first, we certainly can, but I was really curious what you saw as like the biggest event of 2023. Uh, 2022 i'm sorry i'm already in well, next year yeah I, I would say for draft to digital definitely uh the merger with smashwords has been really great and just how smoothly it's gone has been wonderful it, it's just there was a lot of, we, we knew when we started talking about it there was a lot of synergy and there was a lot of different uh things they brought to the table with the smashwords store and some of the features they had there um, you know, we knew like some of the distribution agreements they had worked on, um, just opens up a whole another group of retailers and library systems and subscription partners, um, for us to, uh, start down the road with. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, I, I would say at the industry level, uh, I, I think the two biggest things of this year have been, uh, some of the trends we're seeing with, um, uh, direct sales and, and how that's becoming more and more feasible. Yeah. And then um, just everything happening around machine learning or, or AI, depending on what you want to call it. Um, but we're seeing things in the art uh, world. We're seeing things in the text world. We're seeing things in the coding world that are all pretty exciting. Um, things in the like audiobook narration, uh, translations. Like all of that, we just seen some remarkable strides this year, and you know that's also slightly controversial. And so, uh, just all those things are going to take us all some time to figure out and how they might be a part of our um, system going forward. And I think you know when I think about because you're right, all, all the the AI stuff is what seems to be the most controversial thing. Um, and across the board, you've got you know, uh, audiobook narrators are, are a little leery, designers, uh, cover designers are leery. And there's even some stuff happening on like the copywriting and, and even first draft fiction front. Um, what do you, I'm, I have my own theories about why people are panicking or, or feeling, we'll just say feeling uneasy about that. But what do you guys think is driving some of the tension with AI? I'm just gonna think, let Mark take a stab at it first. Yeah, I, <laughs> go ahead. Mark. I think I think one of the patterns we've consistently seen, particularly in the indie author space, is the best path up the mountain to success is producing a lot of content. And we know, uh, as online retailers and having been in the industry for a long time, uh, and this is an old concept from the beginnings of the internet, the long tail. Right, that a uh, lot of content, um, even again, it's, we make money by keeping a small percentage of the sales of our authors, and based on the sales of our authors, manages you know keep us very successfully moving along and continuing to create free tools for authors. So, a lot of the strategies authors have been employing have been about pushing content out and you know getting on that treadmill and working really really hard. So, if that's been your main strategy. It's terrifying to think that a machine is always going to be faster than us. So I think a lot of the fear comes from that. Yep. What I do would say to that is it negates the idea 
of the personal connection, which I've always believed was so important and so critical. Uh, I've always said that the future of publishing is going to be more collaborative than ever before. And I had no idea that the collaboration was going to involve collaborating with the technology, not just with each other. Like the technology enables us to collaborate, right? The three of us in three different cities mm -hmm. doing this. It's a great way that we can kind of work together. And, and, and throughout the year, we work together, even though we're only physically in the same location very rarely. But imagining that collaborating with a, ma a machine, not all that different than, than going from walking somewhere to jumping on a horse to get there faster to suddenly, uh, you know, Mr. Ford invented another mode of, of, of means of getting from point A to point B. Um, I, I think we have to take a look at the technology as something we can leverage. Uh, and hopefully that helps abate some of those fears that people have. Yeah, I feel like um, most of the reaction to, to this sort of thing is is kind of, we don't know what's going to happen. And so there is a kind of knee jerk uh, thing happening. But I, I, I just look, I look at all of it as being assistive technology, just like, you know, Photoshop or uh, sound, you know, sound editing software on your computer or whatever. There's, there's all kinds of assistive technologies out there that were disruptive when they first arrived on the scene. And I think AI is probably going to go in that same direction personally. And I'm looking forward to seeing how we use it creatively. Um, I, I, I would agree with you, Kevin. Um, I, I think there's a lot of justifiable fear in people who have made their money off of some of these services that AI might um, cut into uh, s some of those yeah. uh, opportunities. I think we could probably all agree that in most areas like editing in uh, narrators and translation, there's not nearly enough people to keep up with the demand, like the actual workers. And so I, I think really the the workers that learn how to use the new technology to help them produce quicker to work with authors and different yeah. professionals and different creatives um, are going to be the ones that find the most success. I, I think there's still a huge lack of just human resources to do all the things everyone wants to do. And that's completely evident when you look at how few books have audiobooks, how few books have uh, versions in different languages. Um, you know, editing is still very expensive to the point where some authors are just not editing or they're self editing. Um, I think it's a lot of opportunity and uh, I understand why people are afraid, but at the same time, I'd encourage them to, it, it's always scary when things change. Like we, we yeah. as people hate change, um, but different technologies in our lives that we take for granted now were change. Um, if I recall correctly, one of the, the biggest upheavals in um, automating a, a human job was when they replaced uh, operators the people mm -hmm. that you would connect people on, on, you know, the telephone calls, if any of the young people out there understand that, but, you know, based on our YouTube demographics, I'm guessing no young people are watching this. <laughs> However, th there, there were people that physically connected to people when you called in to make a phone call yeah. and they replaced that with electronics and everyone thought that that was going to be horrible for the economy, but those people retrained, they learned to do other stuff and the world moved on. And it's a much better system than having people, plugging cables in and out uh, because right. that was just inherently limiting. Um, Excel replaced floors of accountants. Uh, it, that just happened. But it opens up more room for people to take on jobs they actually enjoy and like, I think, and areas where it's creative. Um, there are definitely, uh, where I agree with a lot of people that are not necessarily scared by it, but are angry about it are there are some of the areas like art um, and conceivably some of the, the writing pieces uh, where the training data uh, used things from different authors and different artists and did not, it is not going to be properly compensating them. And so that, I think that's something where there are a lot of legal questions out there. Yeah. You know, I would say with the art, um, I, I still, I would wait if, if I were an author, I would wait to use some of the AI generated art in a commercial capacity, like say on your book cover, uh, while some of those questions get settled in court by people with more money to settle that kind of stuff. But, you know, when you think about 
how awesome a tool things like stable diffusion and mid journey are mm -hmm. uh, for an author to say, okay, this is what I was thinking uh, for my cover and then generating a couple of different variations and then sending it to their artist. I think it will speed up the whole process of authors working with their cover designers. Hopefully uh, authors will remember that cover designers are professional and generally know a little bit better than they to do about the, what commercially works and what doesn't. Right. Um, but I, I think this is going to let everybody uh, be able to communicate better uh, in, in a way that has not been possible before. Yeah. I've yeah. done that already, Dan. Uh, I've used mid journey for some concepts and basically sent those concepts over to my cover design, no, not the cover designer, the artist. And then the artist is going to work based on some of the concepts and do original art. And then my cover designer is going to then add the layers of the text and stuff that makes it uh, look like a professional cover. So I've already leveraged the technology that way. But it also, here's a reminder, and, and it's the acknowledgement. Do I acknowledge the fact that I've read a lot of Stephen King and I've read a lot of this and I've read a lot of that? And when I write, I'm, I'm influenced by these right. people. I just can't read as fast as the machine can. But that is the reality is as, as artists, as creatives, we're constantly inspired not only by the world, the people and things around us, but we're also inspired by the other art yeah. in all its formats. Uh, and, you know, I, I read a great story that Kevin wrote and I'm like, oh, that makes me think of this really cool. What if what if this happened instead? And what if this character was this instead of that? And what if bang? Yeah. and suddenly it's a whole new thing? I mean, been doing it since Shakespeare's time, right? That's what's really going to make things challenging is because uh, the the AI isn't doing much, much more than what human artists do when they're training, you know, and, and trying to imitate the masters, you know, where's where's that line going to be? That That's why it's it's so interesting. We're living in those, you know, proverbial interesting times right now. There are a lot of legal questions uh, it could actually initiate a, a wholesale sweeping change to IP law by the time it's all said and done. Like, you know, what is considered intellectual property at this point? Mm -hmm. So um, surely if you are using it to flat out copy and in, in a copyrighted or trademark protected image, that's clear. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. The question comes from, you know, is imitation theft? So, yeah, lots of lots of interesting questions there. Um, and we have some comments, I think, um, Lynn, to this. I don't want this. We don't want to make this the AI hour, but I do want to yeah, address a couple of these. Uh, KN Lisbon says, I've used both AI and, and live narrators, AI and live translations. I prefer live. And I think that's going to be largely a function of, you know, it's that the AI will improve over time. So there's going to be a point where you may not be able to tell the difference. But, um, I am 100% of the opinion that, there's room in the market for both uh, yeah. a, a live narrated audiobook and a machine learning or AI voice uh, narrated book. Um, there are segments of the population that just can't afford uh, the more expensive live versions. You know, audiobooks are fairly expensive, especially to libraries. Um, so I, I think that's where AI narration, especially now that it's really getting good. Uh, I've been very impressed with some of the solutions that are out there uh, as of recently. Um, you know, I, I compare it to like a trade, uh, the the mass market trade paperback uh, back in the day. Uh, and I think that there's always going to be room for that human acted version that's like a hardback or a special edition that um, we're going to, you know, there's so many readers to follow narrators. And so the narrators that are really, um, incredible are bringing their own audience. And so I don't think anything right. about that's going to change. I, I, I look at accessibility when I think about this. So I, I you know, I, I wrote the book wide for the win in 2020, I believe I can't remember now. It's been the last, the last three years have been like 12 years, but um, <laughs> I had somebody reach out to me for accessibility and said, Hey, is this available in audio? And I wanted to do it myself, but I didn't have the 80 plus hours it would take to do it. And so I emailed them back and I felt bad. I said, would you mind if it was an AI version? And he said, no, I just want to be able to enjoy the, I want to be able to consume the content. So I went into Google AI, Google play. And, and two hours later I had a book for him. It was yeah. accessibility. He needed accessibility. There were people who 
that may be the, the only way that they can read. So I look at that as choice, whether it's uh, something you can afford, whether it's something you prefer, or whether it's yeah. just you don't have a choice and this is just a way to consume it. I want my books to be available. You know, I'd love to have five different audio versions of a book, an AI version, a duet narrated, a single narrator, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the radio drama style. Like that would be great to have all that. And we can't have it all. It's just too cost prohibitive to do that without some sort of technology. Yeah. And when you think about the speed as well, um, how few indie books come out with the audiobook version at the same time as right. the ebook version? And with AI, that probably will be more possible to have a AI audiobook ready day one, um, and then you know follow it up later on, and hopefully reinvest some of those profits you've made from uh, the machine-based uh, uh, version uh, to help pay your human narrator. Uh, yeah, I, I just think that use case is a killer one. Well, moving moving on from AI and our eventual robot overlords, uh, let, let's look back for a moment. Over 2022, uh, there were a couple of milestones that DDD hit. Uh, one of them was that in March of 2022, we actually turned 10 years old as a company. Um, now, once we acquired Smashwords, we can actually say we're much a little slightly older than that. Uh, but you know, 10 years is a pretty remarkable milestone for a company of our type, wouldn't you think? <laughs> uh, it really is, considering how far we've come as a company, how far the the indie side of the industry has come and you know mark and i can certainly speak towards those first few years of conferences that we were doing yeah uh, were so traditionally based and focused like every one of them and there were agents and all the authors were like timidly trying to get the attention of the agents uh and now it's a whole new world where uh people have learned there's another way to do things yeah. Can I propose that we're not 10 years old, but uh, in, in analog years, that makes us 30 years old, probably, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> fair yes, enough, fair enough. I can accept that. Um, yeah, it has been interesting to see, like, the just the shift in the way people think about the industry, that's one thing. But the technology, uh, I remember when I, when I first started self-publishing way back in, like, you know, 2008 or so, um, the you know 99 of what i have available to me now wasn't around at all um we you know draft digital wasn't around uh i think at that point uh maybe smashwords let's see they were they were a couple years ahead of us kdp uh, and smashwords were around in 2009 I, that's i think that was when i did my first ebooks i, I went from it? the only print on demand to ebooks back then yeah yeah but no vellum no book funnel no readsy None of the things that I rely on today, uh, no draft to digital. No so it was a bub. very different landscape. No book mm -hmm. bub. Yeah, no book bub. <laughs> so, you know, how were we even surviving uh, without these things? I mean, back in the day, there was nowhere to spend your advertising money that actually worked. Uh, right. You know, like that was back when the way traditional publisher advertising was like in newspapers and magazines. And Yep. Google Billboards. ads. That was the closest thing we had at that time mm -hmm. to what we have now. And that was a terrible waste of money uh, for me. I, I didn't make mm -hmm. anything, no return on Google ads at that time. So, uh, yeah. So it's interesting to see how things have shifted and we're continuing to, to grow obviously, but there's just, there's, you know, draft to digital itself in that 10 years has gone from, you know, it's the very basics of, of how we started. You know, we're so much more advanced now. Uh, I've been with the company since 2016, and we've added so many features that are that are no brainers to me now. Like thinking about the industry, like of course that exists. A universal book link uh, that that's something that should exist for authors. It should have existed from the start, and you know we we pioneered a lot of this stuff. So it's been a an eventful 10 years. But the other milestone we had was for this show. Uh, we had our 100th episode. As of a few a couple of weeks ago, yeah, about two three weeks ago now, um, this show started in the midst of the pandemic as a way a day it was a daily broadcast. Actually, we did a daily live stream. I'm still baffled that we pulled it off, especially with me being on the road with places with 
virtually no Wi-Fi. <laughs> and then sometimes not having a microphone with me or whatever. Like we still manage to pull that off. That's pretty impressive. I, we were off, often like splitting some of the load. So, you know, each of us would cover about a, a show or two per week. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's kind of insane that uh, it, five days a week for a while we were doing um, yeah. some of these interviews and some of these discussions. And for like a solid um, three months. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm so glad we did because like there, there's just uh, during the pandemic and everyone being stuck at home, I, I feel like there was just that hunger for getting to hear some of the, the voices that you might get to hear at a conference and you're, you weren't able to. Yeah. Yeah. I think we introduced a few folks too, who maybe don't have a conference presence uh, yeah. that you might not have been exposed to otherwise. Um, and just sharing all that insight. It's been, it's been a real growth opportunity for draft digital as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, our, our YouTube presence has grown, which has been kind of fun to watch. Uh, still not in that million subscriber, uh, number yet. So make sure you subscribe, uh, to YouTube right now. Uh, but you know, that just the availability. So having all that content available it's a, it, it wasn't just a chance for you guys, the audience, to grow and learn. It, it gave us a lot of insight as well. We've actually benefited quite a bit from that. Um, and, you know, we're adding new stuff all the time, so it, it's going to be fun. Mark, this one I want you to talk about because I think you, you led this. Uh, you were on the leading edge of this. But in August of 2022, we actually partnered with Humble Bundle. Do you want to talk about how that went? Yeah, uh, this was a great opportunity. So Humble Bumble, uh, for anyone who's not familiar, is is a platform where you get digital assets. So a lot a lot of the audience there would be uh, uh, video games and stuff like that. So digital assets bundled together for one low price, and um, and then the authors split the profits on it. Well, Humble Bundle approached us and wanted to work with us, so we collaborated and got together a science fiction theme bundle. And what I loved about this is we did a combination of some big name authors. Um, we had a Brandon Sanderson book in there. We had some other New York Times bestselling authors. But we made sure, and this is something Megan and I were digging in <laughs> to look at, finding great content from from the, both the Smashwords side and the Draft Digital side, because you know we're still in the process of merging those systems into one, which you know we can talk about a little bit later on, but trying to find some content that looked really, really good, but hadn't yet had a lot of visibility or a lot of sales and success. So, so we very proudly added some titles into that to try and give more authors more visibility, which is part of our ongoing uh, goals uh, as we move forward with you know, um, merchandising and promotions. And that was a really great one. Now, we are looking at doing different themes uh, with, with Humble Bundle. And so as 2023 rolls around, we uh, have a... a a meeting with them in early January to, to discuss what the next steps are. It's all very manual. It's done outside of our systems, but all the authors who participated in it have already been paid. Uh, and, and that was just put directly into their accounts. The only downside is you didn't see the sales in your dashboard. So for those of us who like to look at the dashboard and hit the little refresh button, <laughs> you missed out on that. But hey, better to have that uh, the, the, the coin in your pocket <laughs> at yeah. the end of the day. Oh, so are we uh, are we looking to do any more of those over 2023? Yeah, the hope is to do some different themed ones, right? This was a sci-fi one um, specifically, but we're hoping to do different genres. Um, now, again, we're trying to cater more to the, the, the Humble Bundle audience, which is going to be more sci-fi fantasy based. But we're seeing, hey, what if we what if we tried to introduce some new uh, audiences uh, to them too. So that's that's the discussions we're going to be having with them. Uh, the other thing we'll probably want to do a better job of is provide, like we did for, and I don't want to give away any of the things we're talking about, the Smashwords sale, but create some assets that authors could more easily share uh, to say, hey, I'm in this cool thing. You should go check it out. Yeah. Since you've brought up genres, Mark, um, you actually have I don't know if you were if you're prepared to share it on screen or if it. I, I have it as an overlay. I already loaded it. <laughs> let's 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 pop that up because you actually have yeah. what is it? It's the top genres. Yeah. So I'm I was preparing. I just wanted to take a look at uh, the year so far. Right now, I only have uh, the data from uh, January through November this year. Uh, I do know probably this time next month, the end of January, 
I'll have the sales for all of 2020 and we can probably do as we do on the blog, uh, yeah. a little bit more detailed analysis of what 2022. Is going on here. You've right. lost two years. Oh yeah, sorry, 2022. <laughs> I could do 2020 sales Don't right worry. now. It, Don't it, worry. it does seem I've like doing we somehow all lost 20 and 20, 2021 <laughs> and 2020. So yeah, but yeah. of the um, uh, thanks, Dan. Of the what is it, 3,000 uh, Bizac categories, roughly that 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 exist uh, in the system. Um, I well, did. Oh, did you want to share that? You yeah, I'm going to share the it? top 10. Yeah, can you, so we can't yeah, see us anymore. And maybe if you want to, uh, is that the top 10? Is Paranormal the last one? Because we've got yeah, the Ask Fantasy Us Anything. Paranormal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get okay. that off the screen as soon as I can figure out how. So, yeah, so okay. this is uh, this is based on <laughs> unit sales. Uh, it's no surprise to anyone that Romance occupies, what is that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the top 10 categories. So these are the subcategories. So obviously Contemporary Romance, Number one, uh, romantic suspense, and then new adult, and then historical regency specifically, uh, and then you get paranormal shifter romance, then action and adventure romance. Now, interestingly enough, the very first genre outside of romance that's in that top 10 is action and adventure. I'm sure Kevin's excited to hear about that. Then you get into women's fiction, then back to romance again with uh, you know billionaire romance, and then paranormal fantasy. So Obviously, the genres are heavy, and we do know that romance is um, romance is obviously by far um, still leading the charge, as it as it often has since the beginning, probably since uh, since the inception of Smashwords and and Draft to Digital, right? Yeah, or probably since the inception <laughs> of publishing. Uh, I, I yeah, don't think publishers would publish like to admit it, but. Um, <laughs> It's always kind of kept the uh, the lights on. I think for most people, I, I think it's interesting. Um, kind of that was I, I would say that's kind of a return to pre pandemic. Like the, those were the categories that tend to be the most popular. Yeah, you know, I think yeah. in the, during um, the lockdown, we saw like uh, rom uh, romance comedy was like went from being generally one of the lower ones to being like number two after contemporary romance. And had like a good year or two where it was towards the top and now we're getting back towards that suspense and maybe a little bit of darker stuff it is uh getting back to its throne yeah it, yeah i mean the next the ones down are us. um it's just a big sorry? bucket i'm just gonna say contemporary is always the biggest one biggest for one, us yeah. but it's also just it's got the most books in it and there are books that are probably should be one of the smaller divisions that are right. just classified as contemporary yeah. So just, just so you know, like the next ones that. are Amateur Sleuth, Clean and Wholesome Romance, um, Cozy, yeah. Mystery Cozies, Military Romance again, then Crime. I mean, it's, just, it's interesting to see all the different genres that are, and it used to, I, I remember times when it was a romance, 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 and then you get to like category yeah. 15, and then you would get mysteries and thrillers. Uh, so yeah. interesting to see that mixture there now, like you said. Speaking of cozies, uh, we had a question uh, regarding the audio books. Uh, will DDD audio include cozy mysteries in 2023? Uh, with DDD audio, I can't really say or give you any timelines on genres. Uh, just know that there's a lot of work going on to add more genres than there are now. That remains a mystery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a cozy mystery maybe a cozy mystery uh very good um so we had uh one final like look back at the past thing uh look back at 2022 at least and we can we can certainly discuss anything else that pops up but one of the big things that happened for ddd is related to the merger of course that merger that took over ddd for a year i mean that was that was basically everything we were working on behind the scenes. Uh, and we're really happy with how things are progressing. Um, but one of the things that we introduced was uh, getting D2D &D authors distributed into, or D2D &D books at least, distributed into the Smashwords store. That was a big uh, coup right here at the end of the year. We worked it in right, right under the wire. Um, <laughs> so for the first time, for the first time, and I never thought I'd say this, D2D authors can distribute their books to the Smashwords store. Pretty impressive. Pretty yeah. impressive. We hey, also had why that. Why is that important? Uh, so, I'm sorry, Mark, you dropped out. What was what was that? <laughs> sorry, I was if just saying asking... one of the reasons why that's. I'll stop. 
No, go ahead. You're you're yeah, on yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons I find that really exciting as an author myself is um, what I can earn from the Smashboard store. Like when I look at the draft digital dashboard and I see what I'm earning, I go, ooh. Smashwords. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few more coins in my pocket when I sell on the Smashwords store. Yeah, yeah, that that yeah, you get a you get a better royalty. Um, and we're going to be improving these things as we go. Right now, it's a fairly basic uh, distribution, not a, not a ton of control. And there are some features on Smashwords you don't yet have access to. Uh, but we're we're going to be getting there. Probably the biggest chunk of that's going to be, you know, first quarter or by mid-year uh, 2023 uh, we're thinking uh no promises because we can't make promises on things you never know what's going to happen but yeah something excited. a lot of a lot of our watchers and listeners might not know is that smashwords store has had six consecutive years of growth which is uh outpacing a lot of the different retailers that we work with and so that's very exciting yeah. um just really great response this year to the smashwords end of year sale so we were super excited to be able to get drafted digital titles in there. Uh, I think we've already had more than like 125,000 uh, people uh, or titles opted in uh, to distribute to the Smashwords store. And a good chunk of them participated in uh, the sale this time. Yeah. Uh, uh, the upcoming sales, like they, they run three or four big sales a year. Uh, we'll also be working on tools to give more granular uh, control over the sale. Like this time it's kind of like, opt in all your titles or nothing. Uh, yeah. But later on, we'll be able to support uh, right. giving a lot more options for that. So that's very I, exciting. Just I do want to say that Smashwords store has been incredible. And it's yeah, and it's, it's been a it's been a boon for just for me as an author. So an interesting accident that happened to me was um, there was a I didn't read uh, I didn't read the uh, instructions, and so I didn't wait, realize wait. that Kevin didn't pay attention ah! to something. I know uh, it's unheard of. It's a, it's shocking, <laughs> but when you have your book set under um, a certain price point, I think it's four ninety nine. Um, when you discount it, if uh, if the discount ends up being less than ninety nine cents, it actually gets set for free. And I wasn't really paying attention to that, uh, so a big chunk of my uh, shorter books fell into the free category. At first I panicked about it. Uh, but what I've noticed is people started buy, getting those, buying those. So mm -hmm. I wasn't making any money off that sale. Uh, but shortly after that, like within a week or so, I started seeing a whole lot of sales on the, the higher priced books, which were also discounted. So because it's a good, it's a good opportunity to buy those because they're, I, I think I marked them at like 70, 75% off. So, uh, you know, everybody's buying them cheap, but I'm I'm making that like 80% royalty on that. Uh, so it's been it's been very nice to see those numbers yeah. go up. So there was like a that. one week gap. So if you're looking for a strategy to succeed on the Smashwords store, uh, consider that option. So. I lo I love that that you had that accident and it and it worked out for you because here's the thing, right? You never had titles in the Smashwords store before, so right. suddenly you you as an author are being introduced to a whole swath of and I and I don't know the stats on how many customers we have in the Smashwords store. Dan, do you have that handy? But we have a lot of customers around I the doubt. world. I'm, it's a lot, though. Yeah, yeah I'm told we'll millions. From Smashwords. They said yeah. millions. So I'm million. sticking with millions. Yeah. So um, that's a great opportunity for you to get in front of a whole new audience, which is fantastic. The other yeah. thing that went out just this morning was uh, uh, one of our partnerships with uh, Fresh Fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, the email went out this morning where we actually have a link to the Smashwords sale. Uh, and we've actually featured, we picked four titles that were included. Uh, we had a freebie. We had a box set. Uh, and we had a couple uh, other um, uh, genres uh, in their standalones. And we put those in uh, to test out what it would be like if we tried to advertise and drive more people to them. And just before we got in this call, I was in a meeting with Jim <laughs> uh, on the Smash Smashwords side of uh, things because he has access to more analytics. And we were looking and went, whoa, you can tell that this, you can tell that this book was in the ad because suddenly we saw the, 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 click, uh, the click through rate on, on that yeah. book suddenly jumped uh, out of the blue, which was fantastic. It started to see some hiccups in, in the when the sale started, which is like, oh, go. Cool. Some people are looking at the book, people are looking at the book, and all of a sudden, a big spike. So we'll be doing a little bit more of that and measuring just to see um, what we can do to help uh, you know bring more, more of our authors into more readers' eyes. 
And I'm t- I, we were told, Mark Coker informed us, and we sent out an email to everyone participating in the sale as of yesterday, um, that this period up to the new year is uh, is like when they see the most sales and when they get the most uh, wow. feedback. So this is a good time for you if you are participating in this sale. If you're listening, you missed it. Sorry. Uh, but if you are watching live, rush right out and start doing some additional promotions. Send an email to your list. <laughs> Let them know the sales winding down because nobody wants to miss out on the bargains. So good time to go promote it. And one thing behind the scenes that I want to mention, because uh, I, I, I just think it's incredible, is we added a lot of new people this year, not just the people that came uh, to the company from Smashwords, uh, but there are people like Megan uh, and Jim Azveda and some of the different people Um like we we ended up hiring several new customer service people. We hired hired several developers because uh, we just knew we had all these things we wanted to do. Um, yeah, the, the way the draft the digital team is coming together has just blown my mind this last year. Like it just really, um, as we've added these new people, how quickly they've been picking things up. Uh, you know, I I've just been so proud, especially with. Um, Everything like uh, Mark and Megan have been doing with promotions and like just pushing the envelope of what we were ever capable of doing and getting more and more opportunities for authors is just incredible. Yeah, I, I, what's been very impressive to me is how just instantly the the draft of digital folks and the Smashwords folks just came under the same umbrella with no no static, no no problems. It was like we'd always been working together. We 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 shared such a a close um, uh, perspective, uh, such a close philosophy uh, with each other about the authors and the industry. You know, we're, we're all founded by authors. We're, we're all there for the same reason. And it just instantly translated into a team. So, uh, and that includes, you know, Jim Azvito was, was, uh, was Smashwords initially uh, him coming on board and helping me out. At, uh, he's, he's remarkable. Um, you know, everyone, I, everyone from that team, everyone who came over from that side has been just fantastic. So you should be seeing that out in the world. You'll see, you're going to see yeah. that reflected in what we do. Let, let's talk a bit about like what we're thinking. Uh, Cause we just completed phase one for the Smashwords merger um, going forward in 2023. What, what's our landscape look like? Like, what are we, what are we looking to accomplish in terms of the integration we still have several months of merging things together. Like the, the end goal, I, you know, I think we've tried to communicate this well, but for anyone that might not know is for draft the digital to be the platform on which you distribute and you manage your books, your catalog and smash words to be a storefront uh, primarily. Um, once we get to that point, we'll be able to free up a lot of their developer resources to uh, add all kinds of cool new features. They've got so many different ideas for, ways to empower authors to to control their own promotions and to have opportunities uh they'll be working on you know just making the storefront better for readers uh just so many opportunities there um and so many opportunities for us to learn to market to readers because that's something that'll be slightly new to um the people yeah. that have been with Drafted digital for a long time N- new to some of um, us. some yeah, of us have yeah, been yeah. marketing to readers for a long time Right, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as authors, yeah. But I mean, as as, as, as distributors, um, I really love that opportunity. Like, you know, let's let's be honest. Books to Read is a phenomenal free tool for authors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what we haven't done with it yet is properly push it to readers. We do have, what, what was it? How many? 90,000 uh, different uh, people are following authors on Books to Read or some sort of a thing like that where they're automatically getting an automatic email every time that author releases a new book. Yeah. It, it, the books read link goes to them and there, there you are. So it's free marketing that we're doing for that. Imagine taking books to read to an even po- more powerful level where we can help get, uh, get great titles into uh, in front of more readers by pushing that to readers and showing them um, the best-selling titles because we, you know, as, as the distributor and having access to a storefront uh, of our own, now have the ability to curate a list of bestsellers from across most of the major retailers, pretty much all the major library uh, wholesalers, mm-hmm. as well as a subscription platform, 
uh, as well. And I think that's that's kind of it, right? So we can kind of have a, a really good look at the industry and say, hey, books to read. Here's, here's some great uh, titles that are selling everywhere, not just on one retailer. Uh, that shall not be named. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Now, like we have probably the best data in the world of any titles that are wide um, and just yeah. how well they're doing, what's uh, working well um, and who those readers are. And so very excited to capitalize on all of that uh, data to just help authors. Um, yeah, we're we're planning, uh, you know, with uh, something I'm I, I'm excited. I know you guys will be excited about it is just uh, there were two or three different places that Smashwords delivers books that uh, we hadn't gotten around to yet. Mm -hmm. And so as part of uh, getting things ready for merging everything together, it's just adding new places for authors to go. And so it looks like if things go to plan, we'll be adding several new things in uh, kind of that first and second quarter of the year. Uh, so mm -hmm. some new places to send your books. So that's always exciting. We're speaking of data, uh, we're, we're going to try we're over the next year or so we're looking to become a, a good resource for authors to gain some insight into how industry trends are working, what's happening, uh, because of our inside track information on what's, what's moving in the industry, uh, you know, how things are working, we're able to share some of that, but you know, just giving you a storefront that allows you to see those sales and things in a much more granular way. Uh, we're going to be much more open about things than a lot of the, the other retailers are. So it's going to be interesting to see where that goes and what authors do with that. Authors tend to take data like that and do really interesting, creative things with it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens on that front. We've always um, felt like the retailers are underestimating authors in that regard. And if you just give them the data, they will figure out better ways to sell more books to their readers and help everyone. And so, yeah, yeah. We'll continue um, to push our current partners to offer more data, and uh, and who knows, to, uh, we'll we'll offer more data. So. Yeah, maybe maybe with us um, doing things the way we're doing it, and we figure a few things out, we can share our insight with those uh, yeah. the retailers as well, and, and and show them how this can benefit them. So, yeah. uh, you know, this is it, it, I I don't think we've scratched the surface. I tell people this all the time at conferences, etc. That you have no idea what just happened, like. It's so much bigger than you probably assume that it is. And that storefront all on its own is one of the biggest things that's happened to the indie author industry in, in a decade. So um, I'm really excited about where it's going from here. Uh, that said, speaking of where it's going from here, we've got a couple of minutes left and I wanted us to look in our crystal balls and say, you know, what we think, what do each of us think is, is the, the most likely thing that may come up over not just this next year, but maybe even the next stretch of years, uh, you know, a decade out. What are we thinking are the trends of the industry going forward? Who wants to, who wants to volunteer? <laughs> well, I think we already, we already kind of touched upon that. Uh, I, I know that bit, uh, yeah. AI uh, and, and digital tools like that are going to play a more significant role in authors' yeah. lives. Uh, I think that'll also mean one of the things we always say that's the most important is the connection that they have with their readers. Yeah. And so if you don't have an author newsletter, get one, uh, get started. This isn't a really important thing um, to, to, to connect with those people. And I really think uh, direct sales are, are going to continue to grow. But uh, as Dan already ex expressed and, and Kevin already expressed, um, you know, we have the Smashwords store. We'll have new partners that will continue to be adding. So the great thing for authors and for readers is our ability to help authors get into more platforms, get in front of more readers than ever before. Uh, I really think that we also, we saw a rebound. Uh, we saw the pandemic rebound uh, started in March of this year, right? We had a great boost of sales in March, 2020, and then it kind of rebounded back to <laughs> yeah, more normal numbers, which seemed like a decline. It's still an increase over 2019. Uh, but now that we're seeing that, you know, we seem to be stabilizing a little bit more, uh, embracing new technologies. I, I think that authors are going to start to see some growth that they potentially maybe haven't seen in the last nine months uh, coming uh, on the horizon, probably in the next half year. 
I feel like we're we're likely to see some of the market dominance that that Amazon in particular has uh, start to dwindle a little. Um, it just seems like there's more and more happening worldwide, especially in the EU, uh, that is aimed at chipping away some of the some, some of the hold that Amazon has on these various markets. Uh, we we're not yet seeing a lot of that translate down to the author set yet, but I don't think it's long in coming. So one of the predictions I have for the next, the next five years is that I don't think the Amazon will topple. I don't think most of what they're doing is going away, but I think their, their grip on indie publishing will relax a bit. We'll, I don't know what that's going to look like yet, but I'm predicting that. Um, I just got some. Nope. That's me. <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit more controversial. Uh, okay. Big box book retail, I, I think, will die. Um, as we know, like the big iteration of Barnes and Noble and the remaining players that are like them, um, it's just gonna get smaller and smaller. There, you're already seeing it with Barnes and Noble going over to a smaller style of store. Uh, some of the, the British stores were already a little bit smaller. Things like yep. Indigo in Canada are, it's hard to call them a bookstore anymore. Uh, if you look at like their ratio of books to other things, um, just the economics of books, uh, the margins don't make sense for that style of bookstore anymore. Now that there is Amazon uh, yeah. and not just Amazon, but nearly every other retailer is caught up with being able to deliver books to someone's house relatively quickly. Um, yeah, you know, if you hate Amazon, you, odds are you can still find something like bookshop.org. Um, you know, someday I, I hope we'll be a part of the mix of selling people uh, the like book, like print physical books being shipped to, uh, you know, anywhere in the world. Uh, that'll be really cool. Um, so we're gonna see like small bookstores, but they're gonna be like uh, for us old people, like B. Dalton and Walden books back in the day, uh, <laughs> I miss but, both. You know, or, or 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 the the equivalent <laughs> of uh, the the airport bookstores. Like that size of bookstore, I think has a life, uh, but yeah. it, it's just not like the current Barnes and Noble or Borders was or Books a Million. Like it's yeah. that trend is just going to keep going. Uh, I firmly believe that ebooks are going to continue to eat up market share. It's just not not just ebooks, but audiobooks and ebooks um, are going to continue to eat up some of the print share, but print's going to be important for a very long time. Um, I yeah. think that's going to accelerate a little bit with the generation of younger people that grew up reading on things like Wattpad and some of the different services that were out there that were letting people read for free or relatively close to free uh, and are used to reading in the digital format. So we'll see a little bit more of a arise from those readers reading in digital. Uh, and I think audiobooks just continue uh, to, to grow, um, especially now that there will be some options to make it a little bit cheaper to produce them. Um, I, I think no matter, with all the fears and all the anger and the concerns, I do think AI is gonna be a, become a part of everyone's uh, workflow uh, for any create for any creator but especially for authors just the sooner you make peace with it and start experimenting with it and learning it i think the better um i i think there are still very ethical ways to use it even with the concerns you might have now uh just you know talk to your author community about it don't make it a a debate or like a us versus them, like keep your mind open and talk to people about how can we use this to make our lives better. Right. Um, I didn't mention earlier, and I, I, I want to circle back around. One of the reasons I think print is going to start to rapidly diminish is the cost of print right now is just going up tremendously. Uh, it's due to like issues with globalization that we kind of realized uh, during the the lockdowns and the pandemic, uh, energy costs are going up for transport. Um, there's just all kinds of different issues um, where most of the North American printers uh, went out of business because they couldn't compete with the Chinese printers on 
the heavily subsidized by their government printing industry there. And now like it's going to take a long time for the print um, industry to recover. And yeah. it just means I, I guarantee you, your hardback books, your, uh, your print books are just going to go up in cost. Uh, and I think readers are going to really question, is it worth it to me to spend 35, $40 us just in our market? And then when you look at markets like Australia and New Zealand, where print books were already uh, ridiculously expensive. Right. Um, it's just going to become, it's going to cross a threshold where it's just prohibitive for most people to buy print books in the way that they have been. Yeah. Of course, we're going to look for ways to, to solve that problem yeah. too. So stick around for DDD print. Uh, and I think that's going to have to wrap us up for this episode of self publishing insiders with draft to digital. And I hope you got something uh, useful and interesting out of this episode. It was a nice look back, but I'm I'm really looking forward to the future. I think 2023 is going to be a banner year for the indie author community, uh, and I'm I, I'm excited to be a part of it on both sides of that fence. So, uh, but for the rest of you, make sure that you are bookmarking d2dlive.com. Make sure that you're going and checking that out because every week we have another one of these. Uh, live streams and we also have our podcast goes live every Thursday morning so make sure you're following that checking that out um, and uh, make sure that you are liking following subscribing on all the various social medias and especially on YouTube uh, where we're going to pop up is pretty frequently and we're about to start doing a lot more stuff on YouTube so make sure you're checking us out there but uh, beyond that gentlemen thank you for uh, a fantastic year at draft to digital uh, on behalf of the author community thank thank you and for all of you out there listening and watching stick around it's about to get really exciting we'll see you next time bye everyone <laughs>